This short video is an introduction to scientific scepticism. What is it? How will it change the world? And why should you care? Let's take a look. Here's a well-known optical illusion that I'm sure you've all seen before. Which of the two lines is the longest? It seems obvious, it's the bottom one. But they are, of course, the same length. The first time you see this image, your instinctive reaction is to deny what you're being told and reach for a ruler. But once you've checked thoroughly, then the second time you see the illusion, or one like it, you know that the lines are the same length, even though your brain is still screaming at you that they're not. Congratulations, you've just found a bug in how your brain works. It's not a very important bug, admittedly, unless your job involves buying arrows, but it is universal and it's predictable too. The most important thing that optical illusions teach us is to know how it feels for our brains to deceive us, to be aware of that, to accept that our instincts are wrong, and to consciously overrule them. Optical illusions have such a predictable and universal effect because they exploit features of the human brain that are common to every single one of us. This doesn't mean that our brains are all broken. In fact, quite the opposite. Our brains use clever shortcuts which allow us to learn as much as possible about the outside world from the minimal information that our senses provide. Our brains make best guesses based on what they know and a few rules of thumb. And it's a testament to how well they do that that you hardly ever even realise what's going on. But the assumptions the brain makes are not always correct and sometimes they lead to errors of judgement. And not all of those errors are harmless, like an optical illusion. We see patterns where there are none. We search out evidence that confirms what we want to believe, regardless of whether it's actually true. And we tend to make decisions with our emotions just as much as with our logic. All these flaws, and many more, lead us to sometimes making really bad decisions, both as individuals and as a civilization as a whole. I passionately believe that the best way to solve our global problems and to ensure the best possible future for all of humanity is to make sure that our beliefs match as closely as possible with reality. If we have the most accurate and complete information, then we have the best chance of making the right decisions. If you want to work out the directions from A to B, then you better make sure you know where points A and B actually are, or your directions won't get you where you want to go. Here's an example. Over the last century, we human beings have eradicated some of the world's most deadly diseases, such as smallpox, which was responsible for up to half a billion deaths during the 20th century alone. We only achieved that extraordinary accomplishment because we rejected the idea that diseases were caused by evil spirits, witches' curses or misalignment of mystical energy. We threw away the medieval superstitions of bad blood and tainted air. We kept looking until we found the truth. We discovered the existence of viruses and bacteria, and we learned about the complex workings of the human immune system. That knowledge allowed us to create antibiotics, vaccines, and other medical advances, which have saved billions of lives and have prevented a literally unimaginable level of suffering. Surely then, the same process of inquiry which has provided so many life-saving breakthroughs in medicine should be applied to everything else we care about. Discovering the truth is the first step to solving every problem that humanity faces. So it's really important that we come up with a way of searching for the truth and, more importantly, for recognising it when we find it. And whatever process we invent, it has to be operated by human beings, so we need to make sure it can cope with all of our strengths and our weaknesses. During our lives we encounter an incessant flood of information, some true and some false. To make sense of this, we all come up with our own ways to work out what to believe and what to reject. As young children, our parents and teachers guided us through the world, telling us what was true and false. But as we get older, we develop other techniques for seeking out knowledge. We read books. We search the internet. We may rely on friends who are experts or TV pundits who claim to be. Some of those techniques work well, others not so well. But the good news is that for hundreds of years the smartest people on earth have been thinking about exactly how to sort truth from falsehood. The result of all that trial, error, analysis, argument and discussion is a set of guidelines, 
a best practices guide for discerning truth from fiction. These rules are really simple. They're highly effective and they keep getting better every year as we learn more and more about how the universe works. These best practice techniques are called scientific scepticism. The scientific part comes from use of the scientific method to test and measure the world around us and to sort through all that evidence in a logical and rigorous way. The scepticism part is all about enhancing this process by understanding how our brains can deceive us and actively working to protect ourselves from those mistakes. The combination of both these techniques is the best process we have for learning what is true and what is false. And that means it's the best way to reliably improve the well-being of the entire human race. Scientific scepticism is not just a tool for exploration, but it's also a defence mechanism for our brains. It's like a suit of armour to protect us from con artists, fraudsters and the unscrupulous side of the internet. This powerful set of techniques is so important in today's information age that it should be taught in schools with just as much weight as reading, writing and arithmetic. We teach our children to wash their hands, to look both ways when they cross the road, to avoid talking to strangers, but we don't teach them the most powerful tool set humanity has ever developed to discern what is true from what is false and to defend against dangerous or misleading ideas. This has to change. There is no reason why the children of today should be forced to learn the angry, divisive falsehoods that we adults have created, any more than we should force them to live with the bloodletting, plagues and witch burnings of centuries past. Scientific scepticism is not a panacea. There are many things it cannot solve. Caring about the truth does not change what is or is not true. Adopting a rational way of thinking won't suddenly cure cancer or prevent earthquakes, but it will empower you and all of society to end the injustices that have plagued the human race for millennia. Surely this is the best possible foundation for us all as we strive together to solve the real problems that face humanity in the 21st century and beyond. Thanks very much for listening.